What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Today's video I'm going to show you guys some track day footage from my latest day at Oregon Raceway Park. Unfortunately though things did not go super good so what we'll do is show you a couple laps from when I ran and then I'll talk about it. After that I'll show you guys uh, when it all went wrong. Quick little side note though I am kind of I guess an oddball and when I drive I tend to talk to myself. Helps me concentrate and maybe it might give you guys um, some insight into what I'm thinking as I'm going through the course. Anyways let's hop into the first lap.
in that last little part i did mention that i was terrified at turn 16 and what kind of made me terrified of some of those corners was the fact that i'm not very familiar with them and the whole thing that they're kind of blind so you really have to trust that no one spun out and ironically enough there's actually several spin outs so particularly on corner 16 there's one time i came around there and there was a car right there i feel like orp is honestly one of those courses that it's going to take time to get used to and gain the courage to commit to those blind corners because they're absolutely terrifying. Even talking to a lot of the more experienced people, their actual advice was just be cautious. Don't worry about it, focus on having fun. But obviously I wanna go faster, so it's always hard balancing those things out. Now, something that I was super happy about was the fact that, so I was in the beginner group, which I acknowledge, um, but I was super underpowered compared to everyone else. I mean, at about 100 horsepower, if I'm lucky. And like that Subaru that I was keeping up with and passed, he had, I think, 300 350 to the wheels so the fact that i was able to keep up with cars that have 300 or three times the power that i do is really good and like i said they're only able to gap me on the straights but on the corners i was able to keep up so I feel like I did good, even though there's always room for improvement. Overall, I am happy with how I performed at the track. I, I just feel like it's gonna come down to seat time, seat time, seat time, because like I had a general idea of the lines I needed to take, but there's times where I missed the apex, I braked too late and stuff like that, or just not knowing the surface. So like I'm <laughs> mid corner and then I'm making these minor wheel adjustments because like the ground's not ideal there and I should have been a foot over, you know, just little things like that. Well guys, I actually only showed you guys two laps because it was a lap for my first session and a lap for my second session. Uh, because at the end of my second session things went bad so they wave the flag and then that's when um, well let me just show you guys Cool, thank you, man. That sucks. Initially, what I actually thought happened was that the car caught fire, which is why I immediately pulled over. Um, typically, when stuff like that happens and you're near a like shortcut or like a runoff area, you want to go into those areas because they're safer. Um, if you look, I was literally 10 feet away, but I immediately freaking pulled over because I thought I was on fire. And then when I got to the car, I noticed that it was actually just overheating. What gave that away was the fact that the smoke smelled very, very sweet. And then I could hear the loud pressure being let out. So after that, I actually went and reviewed the footage because I was kind of confused since I did periodically check the coolant gauge. And what I found was happening is in the first run, there wasn't an issue. In the second run towards uh, the second half of it, so it was a 30 minute session. So about the 15 to 20 minute mark, I noticed that it was periodically going up, like pegging and then coming back down going up and down, uh, which would explain why I wasn't catching it because it's not like I'm constantly looking down at the gauges. In addition to seeing those temperatures spike, one of the things that I thought about was the simple fact that the whole time I was pretty much the top of second or like mid third. And so being at those sustained high RPMs, I actually think that could have been a very big contributing factor to the overheating situation. So I'm pretty meticulous about the maintenance on this car. So I was a little bit shocked that it overheated just because I change out all the fluids at least once a year. And I know that's kind of a lot, even for something like coolant, but considering it sees motorsport events, it only makes sense to me. So once I got over the initial shock of everything, what I ended up doing with the car was calling a tow company to see if they would tow me home and they were gonna charge me $800. I was like, screw that, I'm not paying $800. And I took a calculated risk because I already assumed that I did some pretty uh, major damage to the engine. There's also the other side that I already had plans to swap the car. So if I blow up the engine or hurt it worse, it didn't bother me, which is why I decided to top this thing off with coolant and then I just limped it home. And the crazy thing is this thing took me home. It was 200 miles there. Obviously I did my two sessions and then I drove 200 miles back. And literally as I pulled into my driveway, she gave out. I actually did take some footage of that on my phone. So it's vertical and I apologize for that, but uh, check it out. That is the engine. Wait, let me turn it on. 
I mean, the damage is probably already done, so it is what it is. Uh, but it keeps climbing and climbing and climbing and climbing. Uh, yikes. Well, guys, I don't know if you can hear that, but it sounds like it's boiling or pressure is being released. So uh, she literally is dying right at my front door. So even though it sucks that this car broke, I'm still so happy with her. I mean, I've had her for five years now, beat on her all the time doing the things I do with her. And she's just now giving up on me after, you know, 50,000 miles. And like I said, five years of abuse. So I couldn't be happier with her. So moving forward, I just have to figure out what to do with her. Uh, my assumption is because of how much I overheated her, odds are the head gasket probably is toast. And let's just say the head gasket wasn't completely toast and it was fixable. I mean, me driving at 200 miles home was the best idea to be honest with you what i'm essentially going to do is try to diagnose it if it's something small i can patch i'm going to patch it and then try to do one or two more track days i will be honest i highly doubt that's the case i think what's more likely is that the head gasket or some other major problem will be in there and then she's going to sit on the back burner until the next chapter happens which means engine swap time so guys uh thanks for watching and uh, i'll see you next week when we start digging into her and uh, we'll see how bad the damage is 